Hey, it's finally time. Our prayers have been answered. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. It's a celebration. The celebration! Ryzen 3 is finally here. I woke up this morning, took a look at my sub box, and boom! The NDA had been lifted, my sub box had been flooded with glorious Ryzen videos. It was truly a sight to behold, and no, I was not one of the channels that uploaded. I'm not a big star yet, but I'm telling you, AMD, put me in next round. You won't be disappointed. I'll release some quality content showing off your products. But for now, I'm just gonna have to look at other people's benchmarks and not my own. AMD didn't give me a review sample, and Lord knows I'm not gonna buy one myself, cause times are tough out here, man. I NEED DOLLAR DOLLAR DOLLARS WHAT I NEED But it is what it is, no use crying over spilled milk. So, the benchmarks. They really weren't that shocking. Uh, as far as gaming goes, Ryzen 3 is on par with Intel's i3 lineup, usually running a handful of FPS less in most games at 1080p than the i3s, but when it comes to productivity, it swept the floor with the i3 lineup, so it was pretty similar to what we saw from Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7. A little bit lagging behind in gaming, but when it comes to productivity, boom, very good value. But I noticed that a lot of videos I saw compared Ryzen 3 strictly to the Intel i3 lineup, seeing as how their pricing is pretty similar. But what I really wanted to see, and what I'm guessing a lot of you are curious about as well, was how Ryzen 3 would compare head-to-head -head against Intel's i5 lineup. They're both four core CPUs with four threads, and I was just wondering how AMD would compare. Now there were some people out there who included i5s in the benchmarks, but for the most part that really wasn't the case. You just saw a head-to-head -head comparison with the i3s and maybe the Pentium G4560, which is understandable because pricing is pretty similar, but I'm curious. So here you go guys, the Ryzen 3 lineup versus the Intel i5 lineup, mono e mono. So here's an article I found on PCGamer.com, uh, link in the description if you want to check it out, that benchmarked Ryzen 3 using a 1080 Ti at 1080p ultra settings, which for a 1080 Ti is absolutely nothing. They did this to completely remove the possibility of a GPU bottleneck, so the only thing holding these games back is the CPU. It's not really realistic to a real world setting, which is what I'm going to stress later. So. This chart right here, as you can see, it's an average of 16 games that they tested, and when you take a look at it, you see Ryzen 3 1200 getting 73 uh, FPS on average, and the Ryzen 3 1300 X getting about 82 FPS on average. So, pretty good numbers, you're above 60, that's all that matters, right? And then you see that i5 7600K and 7700K all the way up here at over 100 FPS each. So are Intel's i5s really that much better at gaming than the Ryzen 3 series? We're talking 30 plus FPS gains when using an Intel i5 over a Ryzen 3. That's pretty significant, right? So are our hopes of having a great budget alternative other than the Ryzen 5, obviously, to the Intel Core i5 crushed? No, of course not. I know you guys aren't dummies. Unless you're playing on a 144Hz uh, 1080p monitor and you desperately want to max out your FPS and for some reason you only have a Ryzen 3 and an i5, then these benchmarks really don't apply to you at all. A 1080 Ti paired with a Ryzen 3, or even an i5 for that matter, is not a combination you're going to see very often in the real world, especially playing on a 1080p monitor. These types of benchmarks when you pair a super high budget GPU with an entry level CPU like a Ryzen 3 are designed to eliminate GPU bottlenecks like I said earlier and really give you a good idea of how far these CPUs can stretch their legs. But in the real world they usually don't apply. And I'm sure most of you already knew that. After all you aren't dummies, you're subscribed to me so obviously you're a genius, but really. Uh, an entry-level PC gamer who's not familiar with PC hardware and who hasn't built a PC before, if they check out these benchmarks and they see the Intel Core i5 with, a, you know, 30 plus FPS gains over the Ryzen 3, they might start to get the wrong ideas. To illustrate this point, let me show you another benchmark. These guys used a GTX 1080 rather than a 1080 Ti to benchmark their CPUs. Ultra settings 1080p just like the last benchmarks, and if you take a look, you see that as the power of the GPU has decreased, 
uh, 1080 less powerful than a 1080 Ti. The gap in performance is already narrowed considerably. Step it up to 4K and the difference is negligible. So when it comes to building a gaming PC, if you're running anything other than something like a 1080 Ti, a Titan X Pascal or some crazy SLI setup, most of the time you're going to be just fine if you decide to go with a Ryzen 3 over a Core i5. You can save a decent amount of cash when putting together your build and you can put that towards a better GPU because lord knows you're going to need the extra cash for your GPU with this whole Ethereum mining crisis. But hey, that's just my two cents. I'm not saying you're a big dummy if you go ahead and buy an i5. It's all your prerogative. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you're looking to buy a Ryzen 3 CPU or an Intel Core i5 or anything else on Amazon really, please use my Amazon Associates link down in the description below for your next Amazon purchase. It gives me a kickback and helps me make content just like this for you guys. If you like the video, you can leave a like. I'm just throwing that out there. And if you want to, you can also subscribe if you're into that. Have a great night. Peace.